Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review video here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and in this video we're going to be talking about the industry's very best digital pianos for under a thousand dollars. Now we're talking about a thousand dollars US. We're here in Canada but we know that most of the world uh, generally tends to uh, relate their pricing to US dollars. Well the year 2020 is certainly giving us plenty of reasons to find interesting and fun things to do indoors uh, and piano is one of those that just really uh, checks all kinds of boxes. It's stimulating, it's fun, uh, it can be social, you can learn you know, some of your favorite songs within days off YouTube these days. Uh, and so I know that there's a ton of families and parents out there who are thinking about introducing piano either back into their home or possibly for the first time, but they don't want to be spending a huge ton of money until they know whether this is going to be more of a long-term interest. So we're going to be covering all of those digital pianos that you're going to want to be knowing about and checking out uh, and I'll also just make a note we're not going to be talking about anything under the 500 range because that's a separate video. So uh, there's going to be articles that accompany this video, there's going to be all kinds of material and of course the hope is that you watch this and get a better idea about where you want to send your research and spend your money. The other thing that I'll mention is although we're going to get quite detailed in the written article, in the video we're going to be just covering the broad points of why each instrument might be worth your consideration because I've done enough videos to know that if we did that for all seven or eight instruments, this would be a one hour video. So we're going to keep this nice and confined to the most salient points for each of these instruments. So the instruments we're going to be talking about in this video fall into two categories. Some of them are what they refer to as home digitals, meaning that they kind of have permanent looking furniture. Uh, they're not really designed as portable instruments uh, and they can kind of nicely accentuate a living room. The other category we're going to be talking about are sometimes referred to as slabs or portable digital pianos. These are instruments that are designed to be more lightweight. They can be picked up and taken around to uh, rehearsals, you know, to other homes, whatever need be. Um, but they do often offer matching stands uh, and pedals to turn them into home digital. So we're going to be talking about both of those categories. So the first instrument on our list is the Kawai ES110. This is a portable piano, so in its most basic form out of the box, this is designed to be picked up, taken around, uh, and it's one of the most lightweight instruments that you can actually get on the market. Kawai pianos, generally speaking, are known for very authentic touch and a focus on the piano experience. Uh, they tend to be a little more lightweight uh, when it comes to other features, sometimes we call that edutainment, um, uh, you know, lots of sounds on it or, or lots of other rhythm functionality. Um, Kawais tend to not be as loaded up in that department, uh, but a lot of the focus is really uh, geared towards uh, creating as good a piano experience as possible. So the ES110 um, has a responsive uh, compact hammer action. Uh, this is something uh, that's really well known for having a nice uh, subtle texture on the key. It's also uh, ex very, very well weighted. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. Uh, and it has shown itself over the years to be a very durable action as well. The sound that the ES110 has is its kind of main feature uh, in this price range is that it's loaded up with individual uh, stereo samples. And that's derived from uh, Kawai's SKEX uh, concert grand. So we've got individual sampling on this instrument. Uh, we've got a really nice authentic feeling action. It's not too heavy, not too light. Uh, and then in terms of other features, it's got Bluetooth uh, and the onboard uh, speakers for the ES110 are actually uh, quite punchy. We're going to get the specs up there uh, for you to see in a second. But for people who are looking for uh, feel and piano tone as their main priorities, uh, with maybe a secondary priority being uh, either the Bluetooth or just lightweight portability, the ES110 is an excellent choice and certainly is, is, uh, is an easy one to make our list today. So we're going to let you have a quick listen to the ES110, show you some specs, and move on to the next one.
So number two on our list is the Roland FP30. Now the FP30 has been around for a little while, approximately the same amount of time as the ES110, but it is a proven performer on the marketplace. There's a few things that stand out about the FP30, some visual uh, and some uh, kind of sonic. Uh, one of the things that stands out about the action on the FP30 is it's their full PHA4 action. That's an action that you find across uh, much of the Roland line. It's got a triple sensor, which is actually a really big deal for uh, people who are using this to uh, trigger virtual instruments uh, or potentially use this for a lightweight secondary piano in a live setting or, or even in a studio setting. Um, the action also uh, comes with a very uh, nicely textured white key. They kind of have a faux ivory texture about it as well as the black key, something that a lot of uh, pianists uh, really appreciate. Um, and then, of course, the feel of the Roland action is a little bit harder. It's a little bit more of a mechanical feel uh, than the Kawhi. It's neither uh, good nor bad. It's just one of those personal preference things that you have to try. Uh, the speakers on board the Roland are certainly adequate. Uh, they are, uh, you know, they're well balanced. It's very difficult to distort those speakers. Uh, perhaps not quite as warm as the Kawai. However, the Roland is, is probably tops the Kawai out in terms of the features and in terms of uh, some of the connectivity options. Uh, Roland makes a fantastic partner app that's free of charge called the Piano Partner 2, and that extends the FP30 to have features like auto accompaniment. There's all kinds of other uh, songs and pieces that can be played through there for kind of educational or entertainment uh, you know, reasons. Uh, tons of rhythms on there as well. I particularly like uh, the sound and the authenticity of the electric piano sounds on the FP30 as well. So for people where that's a big deal, definitely check it out. One last thing about the FP30, just like the ES110, very lightweight, very easy uh, to carry around and available as well with the full permanent stand and a triple pedal. So we're gonna let you listen to the FP30 for a few seconds, show you some specs, and then we're gonna be moving right along. Piano number three is another one that I'm sure lots of people have run into, read lots about. It is the Yamaha P125, one of the best selling digital pianos in this category for sure. Yamaha is famous for its manufacturing uh, quality control uh, and certainly they have always done a great job of matching their product with the customer demands. The P125 offers a really nice balance of performance and features. Uh, the action may be a little more basic than the first two that I've mentioned, uh, maybe a little less focus on creating as authentic a physical touch as you would get on the FP30 or the Kawai, but the Yamaha has a really nice clear set of speakers on board. Uh, there's actually two speakers that are facing you uh, for the ear, so in terms of the sonic experience that the player themselves gets with the P125, it's just excellent. The other thing that I really appreciate about the P125 uh, is the ease in which you can navigate the various sounds that it has that it's equipped with and it has onboard accompaniment that's really well executed and easy to navigate. Just like the previous two, you can get the P125 with a matching stand uh, and triple pedal uh, and uh, like the other two as well, it's nice and lightweight. So here's a quick sample of the P125, some specs and we'll move right on through the list. So fourth on the list is Casio's brand new PX S1000. It's the little baby brother of the PX S3000 and both of these uh, were issued kind of as a commemorative uh, new model uh, to celebrate uh, Casio's milestone in the digital piano industry. I think it was a major anniversary for them uh, and these have uh, sort of been brought out as kind of a special model. They certainly have given a much bigger emphasis to the overall look and feel of the instrument. 
Uh, the 1000 and 3000 models uh, are very distinct because of the high uh, gloss uh, black shiny plastic. It almost kind of looks like an Apple product uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, all of the controls are touch sensitive. There's no actual physical buttons, which also looks pretty cool. And they've paid particularly close attention uh, to creating as much uh, control and uh, really a variety of different uh, uh, reverb effects, different surround effects, uh, as you really could possibly expect in an instrument of this price point. The action has uh, exaggerated textures on it. That may be something that is a very good thing for people, or it could be something that's a little overdone, but either way, it's something you just really have to try, because uh, you never know until your fingers touch those keys. Um, the uh, 1000 is available with a matching uh, stand, However, it does not have a matching uh, pedal board, but it does come or is available with a floating triple pedal system, something similar to the Roland FP60. Uh, so you'll be able to see lots of photos of that pedal system, the stand, and of course that absolutely gorgeous cabinetry uh, that Casio has done for the PX S1000. So here's a quick sample of the, their, uh, their piano, as well as some specs. We're gonna just keep moving right through this list. Now let's move into the home digitals. These are instruments that are not designed to be portable, but are still very affordable, uh, very easy to move around the house if need be, uh, and come with integrated stands, and in a lot of cases also comes with a bench. Be sure to check every individual product page so that you know exactly what you, whether you need to get an extra bench or whether one is included. So our first home digital on the list is the Kawai KDP-110. This is an interesting choice and comes right in at around the $1,000 mark in the United States. Some dealers may have this for slightly more. Uh, there may be some places where you can get it basically right at the $1,000 mark, but it's so close we definitely wanted to include it in this list. All kinds of things that stand out about the 110. First of all, it's Bluetooth compatible, which means that this will connect easily with any DAW program that has Bluetooth over MIDI compatibility. It also lets you use the KDP-110 with Kawai Zone Sound Museum uh, and any other Kawai app that uh, is built to be compatible with the KDP-110. Uh, the KDP-110 uses an upgraded action that's on the ES-110 and this one has triple sensor. So that means that the KDP-110 as a trigger source for any kind of uh, MIDI integration uh, or even as, you know, sort of so home recording that's gonna work out pretty well. The other thing is the speakers are well equipped. The wattage on the 110 is significantly more than what you would get on the comparable KDP-70 or Roland RP-102. Nice, full sound. And then finally, of course, we've got SKEX individual note samples uh, loaded up on the 110, which is a huge plus. We're talking about a really thick, very detailed tone. It's not particularly surprising that the 110 actually happens to be one of the most popular instruments that we sell here at Miriam, and I'm sure that uh, uh, that is true for many, many, many dealers out there who are lucky enough to carry this particular instrument. So we're gonna let you hear the KDP-110 right now and show you a little bit of it and get some specs and then move right on to the Yamaha Arius 140 series.
Next on their list is the Yamaha YDP140 series. And I say 140 series because uh, there are some dealers who might still be stocking the 142 or 143. Uh, it's something that uh, Yamaha is constantly upgrading, so we'll make sure that you have all of the correct links to the most recent model from the 140 series. So the Arius is known as delivering a really nice combination of both quality of tone and value. It's using a lot of the same type of circuitry that you're gonna find in, for example, the P125, but of course in a home digital cabinet. Uh, there is a little bit of a sacrifice of features uh, on the YDP uh, series compared to the P series, because in exchange, you're getting a, a really, really nice looking cabinet and beefed up speakers. So it tends to be a nice balance for a lot of people uh, and certainly uh, compares very well against things like either the KDP70 or the Roland RP102. So here's a quick sample of the YDP uh, Arius. So the Roland RP102 is next on our list. This is a home digital that's the baby brother of the Roland RP501. Um, also very similarly priced, uh, a little bit lower priced than the Roland F140. So this is gonna be for people who are looking for a home-based uh, cabinet. They really want the kind of the look, uh, the furniture look uh, that it gives, wants to keep the price point nice and close to that thousand dollar mark. Uh, and still take advantage of Roland's legendary Supernatural piano engine. This is something that they've been working on for well over a decade, uh, probably getting close to two get decades at this point, and is a really interesting uh, cutting edge way in which to combine uh, real samples with some synthesis on top to add all kinds of interesting nuance to the tone. Being that it is uh, Bluetooth compatible, uh, Roland has several apps that work with the RP-102. Here's a sample of the Roland RP-102 for you to hear. Very last on the list, Kawai's KDP70. This is the little brother of the KDP110 uh, and takes away a few things that you would get on the 110 but also saves you a several hundred bucks. And sometimes those are the several hundred bucks that you absolutely need. So that's why both are on the list so that you can do the research and figure it out for yourself. What are you missing on this one, the KDP70 that you get on the 110? Well, you're missing some Bluetooth connectivity. There's no Bluetooth on the KDP70. Uh, you're dealing with a drop in the wattage uh, on the speakers. You're also dealing with a downgraded action. So no triple sensor. Uh, I, I believe you're basically getting about the same action on the KDP70 as you actually get on the ES110. Uh, but still, all in all, a very high value, well-built unit. Uh, in many ways, an excellent comparison to the Roland RP-102. So, uh, you know, great that it's a little bit lower price on the list, looks fantastic in the home, uh, and a slightly different sound that you would get from the Roland. So um, everything, everybody's ear is a little bit different. It's always nice to have that variety. So here's a quick sample of the KDP-70.
So thank you so much for joining us for this video. It was a ton of fun to put together. And like I said, this year more than any have given us lots of reasons to find fun, engaging things to do indoors. And what better to do than get a piano and start to explore some of those musical preferences and tastes that we all have and love. Um, all kinds of interesting and fun ways to engage with piano, learn piano, uh, and the instruments that we've just mentioned to you could be your perfect partner to do just that. So thanks for watching once again. If it's the first time that you've been to the channel, we'd really appreciate if you did subscribe. It helps you stay up to date with all of the videos that we're constantly putting out. And best of all, good luck with your shopping. I really hope you find something you and your family love to play. We'll see you back again for more videos. Take care and have a great day. Fun as well.